again, Beth Neville for Art and Life. And what I'm really hoping is that art is going to help you today and in the coming days with life. And I think we are all uh, in tension about our lives, but maybe if we take a creative break and just concentrate on something really good and wonderful uh, about human life that will be at least calmer, happier, uh, and, and maybe just be more entertained. So the topic today is how to do some backgrounds uh, behind uh, images that you've created. And we've been working with very simple shapes. Our little crocus has died. There's a little crocus at the end of it. But the uh, miniature daffodil is still in good shape. So we're going to go back to where we left off uh, with the image of the crocus. And as you will remember, we started with this uh, image of three crocus. Uh, it, is that better? Okay, great. Three crocuses uh, and in a fan shape. And at the end of that session, I had created uh, this image. All right. Now, if you recall, this watercolor did not have a background. When we left it, it was a white background. So what I did after the camera turned off, and I wish you could have watched me do it, I just got I don't know, so creative about what I was doing. I was just down here by myself and uh, I began playing around with the paints. And I chose a background that is often very dramatic for uh, symbols, like crocus are here are symbols. Uh, we're not trying to make them look like a botanical drawing, we're, they're a symbol. So if you think about the color, it's that very dramatic yellow. And you would think, well, if we used, if we used the uh, crocus uh, in a natural way, let's go back to this, this one, there would be sort of the tawny earth colors of spring, the mulches and whatever. But that brown tan is in the same color spectrum as the violet and purple. So if we, so it's not very dramatic. Now, one of the interesting things about symbols, art symbols, is they can be more dramatic and more colorful if you go to a color that is on the opposite side of the color wheel. Okay, now well, most of you probably know what a color wheel is, but for those of you who don't, this is it. And I use this side. Usually when you buy these, they have a white whirl on here. And I tell my students, rip that whirl off and forget about it. It's the theory of primary and secondary colors and kind of complex and terrifying if you're a beginner. So the main thing you want to understand about the color wheel, the color spectrum, is in art that the, they start with, say, a red. And as they move around, and I can't both hold it up and see it, if they, you start with a red, and then it comes orange, and you add more and more yellow. So here you're adding more and more yellow till we get to almost a pure yellow. Then you continue on around, and you begin to add blue. And as you add blue, you get into the green range. You can see how much bluer uh, uh, this color is over here than the yellow green. Then moving around, you could become into the blues, then into the violets, and then back to red again. So let's go back to look at my drawing painting here. You will notice that the purple, this purple is on this side of the color wheel, right there. And in order to be more dramatic, what I did was go way to the opposite side of the color wheel, to the yellows over here. So that gives the maximum contrast between uh, the color uh, object of the symbol, violet, and the uh, background, which is in the yellows. So we're going to pause for a moment, readjust the camera, and I'll show you how I achieved that yellow color. We're going to talk about how I achieved this very brilliant yellow uh, and gold in here. So first, let's look at the, the uh, pigments that we have that we're going to use. 
I've chosen three. The first one is one of the most obvious uh, that for choice for yellow. It's called transparent yellow. And this is a very good quality. This is uh, Windsor Newton. So we're going to open up the tube and I'm going to uh, squeeze out some color right directly from the tube. All right, so dipping into the water over here, um, into the tube, we're gonna test that color out. Oh my goodness, what a gorgeous color. Transparent yellow. Now, if you look at the color wheel, uh, you'll see that this color has quite a bit of orange in it. It's moving in this direction rather than moving in the cool direction. So that is our transparent yellow. So let's label it transparent yellow. And you'll notice I'm using a very high quality paper here, but one that got damaged uh, in an accident. So it makes a good scrap uh, to uh, test out our paints. Okay, we're putting the top back on. I want to find another yellow over here. I want to find lemon yellow. And that's Naples yellow. That's not it. Where's my lemon yellow? Hmm, maybe I don't own any lemon yellow. Okay, let's just keep checking here. Naples yellow, cadmium yellow. Nope. No, that's the one I just used. Oh, one more. Oh, good. My husband had a great eye. Thank you. He You're found welcome. the lemon yellow. Thank you, uh, technical assistant Robert Neville and husband. Okay, this is the next one. Lemon yellow is a very cold yellow. So we'll see here. And it's good to know your, your to make a color chart. I'm very much of a fan of color charts. Okay, so we can see this is a very cool, what they call a cool yellow, uh, going very much in the color of, of, say, lemons, which is why it's called lemon yellow. We're going to really concentrate. Okay, that's lemon yellow. All right, always put the tops back on so you know where your tops are and the paints don't dry out and just try to be orderly. Okay, we're gonna label this one, uh, lemon, yellow. All right, now we're going to go into what's called cadmium yellow. Now I wanna tell you what happened here. This cap was off and so this tube of paint dried up. You can do the following. You take a knife, the tube was like this, you, with a knife, a sharp knife, you cut through the tube, and lo and behold, you can actually get uh, some paint out of it. And somewhere I had a palette knife. Can't find the palette knife. All right, I'm gonna have to worry about that. There was a palette knife where I dug out the paint. So we're going to go in here, cleaning out the brush, so we have clean water, very carefully so that we don't spoil our brush. We're going to go for cadmium yellow. And this, if you can see, is going toward orange. This is a much more, it's not orange. No way is it orange, it's still a yellow, but it has more of that red in it. This is a, called a cool yellow, and this is called a warm yellow. So there's our cadmium, and we're going to label that one. This is cadmium. C-A-D-I-U-M, yellow. Now, this new color that I just discovered a couple of years ago absolutely fascinates me, and I cannot pronounce it. Uh, as a self-taught artist, there are a lot of things I didn't learn, and one is the how to pronounce these names. So I'm going to spell it out for you down here. It's Q-U-I-N. Q, U, I, N, which I would call Quinn. Then it's the word acrid, A, C, R, I, D, acrid meaning sharp, and then it ends in O, N, E. And then the most important part is it's gold. And this is what you really need to know. So I would say quinacridone. Quinacridone, what would you say? I'm asking my husband. That's fine. Quinacridone, Sounds okay, right. gold. You're going to love this color. Now, this is the type of color you buy after you have a complete set of paints because these colors are very expensive and they're sort of frill colors, the ones you can do without. But isn't this a fabulous color? 
It is indeed gold. And the more we apply, the more gold it gets. Just an absolutely juicy, yummy, yummy, yummy color. So these are the three we're going to use. Our transparent yellow, lemon yellow, uh, cadmium, let me turn this around, cadmium and uh, quinacridone gold. So those are the colors that I used in the background. And I need to find the cap. Well, here's the cap. Again, try to make sure you put the caps on. It will help to uh, protect your paints. Okay, and I like to have them in order over here. All right. So now that we've chosen our colors, we're going to go back to our painting of the giant crocus. And I'm going to do this upside down. I can do a background upside down. So I don't know how much of this we're going to do. But I did this just a few minutes ago uh, to try to get some uh, shapes going here. Uh, I don't think they're the most beautiful um, crocuses in the world, but they're good for demonstration. All right, over in here, except for the quinacridone, uh, I have most of the colors we're going to use. So we're going to start on our palette with uh, the lightest one, which is the lemon yellow. We're going to get a lot of lemon yellow going, a big puddle of lemon yellow. All right, keep mushing around with the brush. All right, even more. Okay, then we're going to get over here, we have the um, other yellow, cadmium yellow, and there's a little bit of uh, a leftover red in here, which I don't think is going to bother us too much. So those are going to be our two basic colors. Okay, we're going to start with a brush that comes to a good point, uh, and so it holds a lot of paint, but it also has a good sharp uh, point. And we're going to go to these spaces in here, and we're going to begin filling in the spaces. We're not going to worry too much about if there's an overlap, all right, or if we have a little, what I call peaking holes, a little bit of white left over. So here we go, going up to the edge, moving around, working fairly rapidly, okay, just dabbing in the yellows. All right, now for some variety. So there we've used that yellow over there, fixing up these edges a little bit. We want to have pretty good edges. Okay, now let's, let's for the sake of variety, let's move over here to the other side with a lemon yellow. So, you know, we don't have to have every single one of these holes. That white represents the highlight on the stem of the crocus. So we don't want to mis make a mistake and fill that in because then it would make it look like it was background, not background. So we're proceeding ahead here, okay, coming in more. All right, this is our first step. And we can be very cavalier with the yellow uh, going over the top of the green because it's a light color. If this were a dark color, uh, we would have to be more careful. But the yellow can go right over the top of that green. And if it overlaps a little bit, it's really a plus. It's really a, um, adds to the uh, enjoyment of the of the color yellow. So we're continuing to, in fact, there I went completely over the leaf and no problem whatsoever. Okay, moving on out. Now, I'm here, when we get up to the top, I'm going to use cadmium yellow. That's another highlight. We don't want to hit our highlights. So we're coming along here. Now, this is where it really pays off to have a large pool of your paint because we want to continue this yellow up here, and we don't want a line uh, where it's dried. That was a mistake. You see, when I went the yellow over the top of the purple, there was an unpleasant color. So I'll have to be more careful uh, here uh, than I was with the, um, the green. All right, moving ahead here. Okay, we're still more color, more color up here. Kind of fanning out, this is a fan shape. So as I paint, I'm fanning outward here. Out, out, out. Okay, let's go back down here, I think, uh, to our lemon yellow. Um, remember, don't cover up your highlight. That would be a mistake. Nope, certainly you don't want to lose that highlight. Okay, so we're moving out here. We're not worrying about that dab of purple. Yes, the purple shouldn't have spattered there, but 
We're just not going to get our concern with things like that. If it really was ruining your picture, uh, your painting, there would be ways to remove it, but we're not going to discuss that now. That can be a topic. Fixing up mistakes. Wouldn't that be a good topic for a class? Fixing up your mistakes. Okay, so we're coming along here. Okay, now we need to get some more yellow over in here. I think I'm gonna go for a mixture. Coming around in here. Okay, fanning up. All right. And I'm continuing, you notice, uh, with the strokes, to get, continue that sense of fanning outward. Now, one of the things I did with this painting was at this stage, I added green. So you're going to see me now dipping into the green and kind of dabbling in some green. Uh, and I just love the way that worked out. So because this is still damp, which is why I'm moving ahead here so rapidly, um, you can incorporate uh, the green and the yellow together. And I'm not, I'm not making it too dominant. I don't want it to look like more plant life. I just want to try to get the green that's down there back up here. So we're moving along rapidly. You have to paint rapidly at this stage because it's going to begin to dry. And once it dries, um, then you begin to get lines. Now, at this stage, I have to kind of watch it and make sure that it's not developing little uh, wavy lines as it dries. So I'm going to be kind of keeping my eye on it here, just watching while it's drying. Should dry pretty quickly. All right, a little more yellow up here I think would be helpful. More yellow, more yellow. All right, ignore that. Okay, now uh, down here, uh, let's add a little more yellow. You know, why not? More yellow. Kind of fading it out a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Now, what's the difference between this one and this one? It's that paint I can't pronounce. Quinacridone, quinacridone. That's the difference. So now we're waiting for this to dry a little bit. There's a really damp part down here. And I may, if I want to dry it up, dry your brush go down to that area and just put the dry brush on it and we'll soak up some of the paint and water and dry it a little bit faster. All right, we're sort of a, a bit of a stopping point waiting for this to dry and uh, we're going to continue uh, to film, but I'm just gonna let this dry for a minute. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to show you another painting uh, where I use the same principle. Is it showing up properly? Yes. Yes, okay. I enjoy doing grape paintings very much. And this one, I want to be very abstract, not very realistic. And here you can see the violet purples. This is done in oils. And then I use the yellows and the greens around the outside. And I think it makes it very dramatic. It's as if the uh, grape is in shadow against a golden background. All right, one last step. And then I think we'll be just about ready to stop. We're going to go back to that wonderful paint uh, put aquadone. Um, here we go. All right, I'm going to paint directly out of the tube and I'm going to put that color right over the top of the, um, the other uh, gold, the other yellow paints. Being a little bit more careful, it's a very, uh, a much more dense paint, so it won't go over the green as well as the yellow. So I have to be a little more cautious. I can't just flick it on. See how much dent, more dense, how saturated actually is the word. Saturated is the technical word here. So we're going to apply that more cautiously. All right. And let's do it over here. But it really is giving sort of a fiery sunset yellow uh, background um, behind the crocus leaves. Whoops. You don't want a piece of solid paint in there. Let's got to get rid of that. Trying to pay a little more attention to the edge of the crocus, adding more paint in here. You see how I'm increasing the density, the saturation of the paint as it goes up to the crocus. So it's very rich in that 
right next to the crocus. Okay, so uh, now I want to show you, I'm not quite finished here, but I think you can get the idea of what we're doing. I want to show you what, how to do it up here. All right, this is a, still a little bit damp, which is good. So we're going to come in here again, fairly carefully, um, so that we don't overlap the purple, all right? And again, you have to work fairly rapidly. And then you kind of fan it out. So a little bit of water, not too much water. That's a better beginner's mistake. They dip too much into the water. Carefully around the edge, all right? And then brushing it out this way, okay? So let's back into the paint, carefully, carefully around the flower. This is still damp, and that's very important. Uh, if it were completely dry, this would be leaving a harsh line. But the fact that this is damp uh, allows it to blend in uh, very nicely. And you can see that with watercolor, um, oops, that gets a little sharp. So now I do want to add more water there to blend it out. It's just a little too, and I'd really like to have this be, I think, very dark in here. This is going to be as dark as I can get it. All right. And in. Careful, careful going around that flower. And now I may not have time to do it. Yes, I think I will. I'd like to show you how I can make the petals uh, more dramatic. Um, okay, so it's coming along. To see how much more vibrant it's getting, let's add a little of this over here. I'm going to turn this around a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Careful around the flower. Yellow over purple makes sort of a muddy brown, which is why we have to slow down when we get to the, the uh, five. You can put the gold over the top of the, of the green, but when it goes over the top, there's where it went over the top. Do you see that dark line, that dark line right there? That's where I overlapped. And that gives us a, a dark line because purple and yellow on opposite side of the color wheel uh, will tend to make sort of a, a muddy, dark color. Okay, now I think we've got enough time left. Yeah, I don't think we, I think we need some down here too. This sort of looks like it was left out. So let's go down here and let's do the same thing over here. I don't want that to look like it's forgotten space. Okay, all right, cool. Okay, this is a little harsh. I think our highlights, I'm going to soften up those highlights. I think they're just a bit too over the top. So I'm going to mix a blue and a violet together and just flick in a little bit of a blue highlight. Not too much, just tone that down just a tiny bit. Yeah, let's go over here. Now, if I were really had time to spend on this, I would um, show you how to darken these all up and make them more dramatic. But we really don't have time for that. And the problem now is, hmm, this is still wet. So um, I can't do much with it. Uh, and I think what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to the one that I did finish and see if I can explain it. What I did here was, let's put them side by side, okay, so you can see it more. If you can see the difference here between these leaves and these, what I did was to go back into the green and make this much darker with stripes, dark, 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 dark. And then the last step, when that tried, was to go back, this is so important, go back to the violet when it's dry and introduce a little bit of the violet down here. So can you see how much richer these leaves are than these? These are just plain green. But if you make darker stripes, let that dry, and then just a flick with the, the violet. So violet, 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 there, 
there, and there. And what that does is to bring the color that you have up here down into your leaf color and make it a little more dramatic. And it's interesting, and I'm looking at this one right now, I think this is a little bit too, ah, too much, too much, too much, oh my gosh. Okay, it's too much of Mopador, yeah. All right, so, and you can also see the difference here. I went back again and again with the blues and the violets, how this is so much stronger than that. And there's a lot of blue in here, uh, but I don't really want to paint this a second time. I'm very happy with it the way it is. And I do want to show you uh, what I did with this. I was so pleased with this that I put it on my scanner. I have a very good scanner upstairs. And I scanned it. And then I took it to, uh, I emailed the scan to Staples and have them uh, photocopy it on a fairly glossy paper. And I got this, uh, made this card out of it. Uh, which I sent to uh, my friends for uh, an Easter card coming up, uh, hopefully, and also a way of kind of cheering everybody up in this uh, very unpleasant uh, situation that we're in. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for the next Art and Life episode. We're going to continue to work on backgrounds, and especially we're going to work on another uh, painting that I did of daffodils. So we're going to try to uh, discover how to paint daffodils, and we're going to put a background on this one. So see you next week for Art and Life with Beth Neville. Thanks for watching.